press the bell icon on the YouTube app to never miss a video from News Laundry. Welcome to News Laundry Chota Hafta. For the full episode, subscribe because it is behind the paywall and only subscribers get access to uncut, complete content. News Laundry Hafta is our weekly wrap of all that made the news, all that didn't and all that should have and all that shouldn't have. We agree, we disagree, we critique and occasionally we beat each other up. But it's all good fun. Subscribe. This is a News Laundry podcast and you're listening to NL Hafta. <laughs> Merry Christmas. That was a ho ho ho, but done in Mogambo style. Because English is our lagan, and news laundry is our hafta. Kabi nae chhodte. Welcome to yet another episode of Hafta. I am Abhinandan Sekri. With me on the panel this week, I have Saika Datta. Those of you who do not know who he is, though you would, because he's been a journalist for over two decades. He's currently the South Asia editor of Asia Times, the former policy director of Center for Internet and Society. He's worked as a defense correspondent with the Indian Express, assistant editor with Outlook, resident editor with DNA, and member of the editorial board with Z News and editor national security with Hindustan Times. His investigative reporting has been awarded the International Press Institute Award in 2007, the Jagan Fadnis Memorial Award in 2008, and the National RT Award for Investigative Journalism in 2010. He's also the author of India's Special Forces, published in 2013, a seminal book on the history and future of India's special operation capabilities. Welcome, Saikat. Thank you, everyone. And we have our in-house commentariat, Anand Vardhan. Hello. Commentariat. Raman Kripal. Hello. And Manisha Pandey. Hi. Who just gives snide angles and that's all. Snide angles? Yeah, whatever. Snide comments. <laughs> so, a lot happened last week. Uh, the biggest story that everybody picked up but picked up a little late was the Meghalaya Minor Rescue. In fact, today I saw an interview with uh, Chief Minister Conrad Sangma that India today did. And um, I really don't know what to believe and what not to. Maybe uh, we should, you know, get someone from that part of the country to write uh, because his explanation didn't seem altogether unreasonable, although I could be wrong. Hmm. But maybe we could discuss that. But you know, bit. it's been 15 days now. And I think, I mean, calling a rescue operation is, I don't think anyone would be alive. It's 15 days. and 70 feet of water. And rat holes, like these mining, they're really like, it's as good to fit in one person yeah. and they're horizontal. Right. Uh, I don't think that. I mean, in alive. today's piece, it says that there's a foul smell that's coming from there. The yeah, divers yeah, yeah. who went in and they said it's too late. But, I think 15 days. But, is... I mean, you never know. Um, but no, 15 days you can survive as long as there's water. But there, when there it's is water. Wo- no, but, uh, but the holes is f- they f- it's, filled it's filled with water. So we don't know if there's a patch so. like in Thailand. You know, in, under that there was a patch where they were dry. So, mm. anyway, so that's something that uh, we will discuss and why it became national news so late because two weeks is a long time then Nitin Gadkari and his many speeches and interpretations and misinterpretations and is he actually spoiling for a fight or is the media up to the Narad Muni tactics we shall discuss that crisis in up after house says take back Bharatan from Rajiv I don't know if there was a crisis but for a day it was major news I think it was quite irrelevant but Anyway, something else that made many hours of panels possible was Nasiruddin Shah's statement, which became the toast of, like, for four days. I was shocked that a guy just has to say one thing and everyone just latches onto it. And the funniest thing is that Republic actually ran a debate saying, uh, is the media making too much of... No. Yeah, really? yeah. I was like, dude, huh? Eh? Anyway. You, obviously, you're making too much. <laughs> Meta. Then Pakistan court sentences Nawaz Sharif to seven years in jail. How about that? Who would have thought that's possible in South Asia? West Bengal, the Rath Yatra Supreme Court declines BJP's plea for an urgent hearing. Those of you who don't know, Mamta Di has refused to allow BJP's Yatra to go through her, much like what Lalu had done to Advani in, in the 90s, right? Hmm. Kind of similar. Yes, but there are differences, but yes, on surface, same. Yes. Well, what are the differences before I move on quickly, if you could tell me? Because it was built up for a particular movement, it's it is just I think an ele- uh, build up to an election. election. Okay. Yeah. But the man who stopped uh, Advani's yatra, Advani's yatra, the officer on ground is R. a Kissing. MP in the BJP today. Oh. Oh. Former R. Home Sec Union Home Secretary. Mm-hmm. R. 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 Yes. Snooping. I want to start with the snooping. That's why, in fact, we thought a lot could be added by young Saikat, who has done much RTI filing in this category. Saikat, you have been quoted in 
many pieces including i think madhu's piece of you filed an rti saying that how much snooping did the upa do this was in 2013 you filed an rti right yes and you uh, you got about 9000 Uh, so phone numbers i what, wasn't what, explain what is the time period and what did that mean so i wasn't looking at uh, how much snooping the upa does what i was looking at is what is the surveillance structure and what and the so called safeguards that are there so for example if suddenly the government decides to put you under surveillance or anybody else in this room under surveillance what is the process so i was trying to examine that and more important what are the safeguards so that the government can't put just about anybody right. so i was trying to understand that and this was uh, basically a result of a series of stories i had done in 2010 where several political leaders including nitish kumar and the others had been put under surveillance and we aired that as a cover story yeah. in uh, outlook magazine and then it became a major debate mm. and then we brought out the neera radia tapes and again there was a major debate around surveillance issues and there's a fascinating exchange between then leader of the opposition in the rajya sabha arun jetli and p chidambaram uh, on that issue today both of them are now saying exactly the opposite of what, what they, they were said saying that that <laughs> may 20 10 or 2011 like debate nicolas cage has become john trolda exactly. john trolda has become nicolas cage exactly huh. so it's interesting how whenever you are in government you speak a certain tune and when you are out of government you say exactly the opposite but what but, did you find at that time so at that time we were looking at that you know what is the volume of on an average basis is the amount of uh, phones that are put under surveillance and mind you this is only at the central level mm. as you know even the states have the right and the power to carry out surveillance but just at the central level and the response was that on an average about 100000 phones in a year are put under surveillance by the central government wow which means if you break that up every month that's about 8000 to 9000 phones every month, month which translates to anything to between 250 to 300 350 phones being ordered sanctioned by the union home secretary so that's just one person every day signing 300 to 350 so there's no thoughts or due diligence Now, or application of mind that can be done on the is union it home secretary is supposed to have 1500 other things to do on a day to day basis including center state relations official languages law and order everything imagine within that he or she has to take out some time to sign 300 applications where is the scope to pay any attention to detail oh, application and this is not just that you see post 1996 there is a supreme court judgment which is called the pucl versus union of india mm. which is there in all india reporter air 97 now that was basically a case challenging the constitutional validity of section 52 of the indian telegraph act which allows for surveillance but what's interesting here is that while the supreme court said that look this is constitutional we can't question the law there are no safeguards so they promulgated a whole lot of safeguards which were then taken and turned into rules under the indian telegraph act okay so this is the surveillance um, that is happening my question is how many people are required to actually listen to the transcribes of all these because see my understanding of surveillance is done from the the us right if they saw if they hear for the first 2 minutes if the conversation is a personal conversation they are required to switch it off you know when they used to tap al capone and stuff in that whole film that i've seen here so they are recording the whole thing to so sunsta kon hai so each each agency has got their own surveillance department na kitne log honge sir ib hai ib mein bahut hai ib hai cbi hai so they all they, they all have their own so many hours to listen to sir when i had joined na my first job i remember was to transcribe an interview of this guy called altaf hussain mqm ka hota tha ye ek mujhe ek cassette diya gaya tha walkman diya gaya tha aur headphones diye gaye the ab to ye 60 minute ka transcribe kar sir mujhe 3 din lag gaye the ab 9 9000 ghante ki tape kaun transcribe kar raha hai i give you another example when we were doing the radio tapes in outlook uh-huh. there were some 18 of us who used to spend through the night and through the day we used to work taking just two or three hour breaks mm. 200 phone calls each call not more than 2 to 3 minutes mm. it took us 2 weeks to go through that material that is what i want to know itna aap so basically you are gather kar rahe ho sun kon raha hai there is no capacity hai? there is no capacity and this is the problem which nobody wants to acknowledge people have a information glut so only that parts which you want to misuse are usually heard the rest nobody knows what happens to it just yesterday the isis ah. uh, is 
terror plot busted 10 held woman six detained in up those of you who have seen the photographs there are these six kattas there is a box of sutli bombs there is what is apparently a mortar you know for shelling or whatever it is uh, there are two views some say that do this kind of stuff gale ka nukkad kabad marsh will also not have i mean will have more than this uh, and they have been petty gangs that have been raided that have come up with way more sophisticated weaponry than this so called mm. is uh, so i was discussing with raman sir upstairs and he said the problem is that since the nis came out which is just about 10 or 12 years old mm. they are the only source that everybody is going by there is no independent and if they say this is is and say okay this is is a journalist will need at least 6 8 10 days to study you know find out who these people are go to their villages who is the mother father is there does it make any sense that this person could be but until that happens everybody just parrots the nia line and nia gives what they wanted and to to keep an open mind why would one assume that an isis cell would be very well funded in india i mean why would so they have so there's one thing so, that comes yes. to my mind is a world over isis inspired attacks are not very sophisticated it's one man with a truck one man with a knife and that is what is so scary about isis that you don't need like an al qaeda sort of a you know well planned operation it's just one radicalized man who can wreak havoc huh. so him them having sutli bombs or having desi kattas unko shor machane basically it need not i mean that is not grounds enough to say that it could not be isis but then again nia till a year ago was investigating a case of love jihad <laughs> where yes. they went to the supreme court saying she has been programmed and we have to deprogram her so yeah. i i would ask a lot of questions of nia to yeah, be able to sort of yeah it's a bit of a bit of joke yeah. nia actually they've made a mockery of most themselves most of the people they are out of uh, the jail i mean colonel prohit or for that matter uh, so they, many of them hate rate has been low ha huh? uh, saikat what do you think and and why do you think what do you think so first of all there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about the how the ISS works i mean it's like the new al qaeda where anybody who would do something everybody would jump 10 years ago and say it's al qaeda al qaeda mm. and now a similar thing seems to be happening with the is first of all does the is is channels claim that these people are their own mm. they have been completely silent whereas whenever they have had to claim they have not only posted the bayats which is the woe that these people have to take they not only post that they also post videos and stuff like and that and they also post that if you don't leave these guys will come and kill you also i saw the isis flag is a print out that was kept next to the Correct. that was kind of yeah okay now tell us about meghalaya uh, manisha and when did the national media take note of it so on 13th of december 15 miners were trapped in this uh, rat hole which today uh, if you could watch uh, read the indian express's front page they have a good uh, diagram explaining it and just looking at it you feel suffocated just thinking how this could be done i think rat hole mining was banned, banned in 2014 by the national tribunal so 13 they got december 13th they got trapped what is the date today december today is 27th 27th 26th 26th so yeah and, and there was really no not much conversation on it except uh, interestingly a south indian paper malayalam manorama had it on the front page and had been covering it quite a lot shillong times had been doing it so the local media had been talking about it nothing much in the television till yesterday a uh, news came that they have not been able to rescue Uh, miners because they don't have adequate pumps to apparently the pumps were requisitioned by yeah. you know whichever central government 10 pumps of 100 horsepower and they said we don't have those pumps and, and the same company which makes pumps which had sent pumps for the mm-hmm. thailand rescue has said okay we'll send you some pumps but and it hasn't made much uh, now what i mean i don't know whether mr sangma was saying the right thing or not but it appears a this mining is illegal yeah it's illegal so whoever is running these mines will that person be apprehended because in punjab you know you cannot take sand off a river the size the scale of that operation someone has it on camera and a reporter was killed when when he mm-hmm. did this and an aap mla was also sorted so much for them was beaten up when he tried to do. so the impunity with which it operates so in this interview what is interesting was sangma said that we'll have to regulate it you cannot ban it it's huh? not going to work but it's already been banned what yes, do you unban so he's it so he's saying that you have to unban it because otherwise it will happen in this way so you have to regulate it that's what he said but today. it's too dangerous it's like saying let's yeah. just regulate um, cocaine or Heroin. sewage uh, you know manual scavenging because yeah, otherwise you're dying so much let's regulate yeah, it is, and, yeah think, what but, they abandoned mines no no they weren't abandoned no it's not mines. abandoned basically the mountain is of rock of of coal so rather than go like this they just dig into mm. this like yeah. this vertical pipes and then horizontally but, they dig enough but for one person to but what he said today in the interview and maybe they believed this but it would not be polite to say it 
he said that the river he says of course meghalaya is also cherrapunji which used to have the la- one of the you know the highest rainfalls in the world at one point he says that river the amount it's rained i think he gave the cubic meter of water also that has gone into that mine hmm he without really saying so what he was saying is dude the entire river has gone into that mine yeah. like forget anyone coming out of that's there that's true that even i agree so i think it was not apathy but the complete certainty that no one can come out of that alive mm. i don't know that's what came across in today's interview that i saw of india today i don't know if you remember in the 70s there was a very popular film which dealt with this kala patthar called kala patthar which deals exactly with this where there is a very uh, greedy and exploitative mine owner mm, who is constantly warned by the engineer which is shashi kapoor yeah, saying that, that if way. you get into this shaft you will come dangerously close, close to, to the, the river mm. and if you come close to the river you will come to a point where the river will puncture the cave Wall and, and the water and flood the mines that's what seems to have happened exactly and that's yeah. exactly what has happened and therefore what was shown in that film in the 70s is exactly things haven't really changed mm. till now where you have a situation where a ngt as manisha pointed out had banned it and mm. despite that ban they were mining this and people must have been aware of the fact that they are mining very close to the river and which rat holes will eventually lead to the river yeah. therefore the threat of flooding is very real somebody must have ignored it because they kept looking for veins which has which is rich in coal and has led to this tragedy uh for those who don't know in west bengal there was a rath yatra that bjp wanted to take out and they wanted to do this whole you know ram ka rath kind of because elections are coming close and for the first time they feel that they'll have some chance in bengal though if you speak to any bengalis they say they have as much of a chance in bengal as they have in tamil nadu which is very little and mamta said they cannot have the rath yatra here now I am last one to agree with the BJP on anything. I do think there is a tendency of Bengal being running being run by whoever the chief minister when the left was there the Ramtas there how the fuck they want and no one can do jack. Ab bhai if they want to do rath yatra they have a right to do rath yatra and the supreme court also has not even given them an early uh, urgent hearing. So let's go on Manisha what what is your view? I really don't like Mamta Banerjee's politics when it comes to appeasement and, and you know like what she did with Durga uh, jab ye visarjan ka time ho raha tha she said because of Muharram Tazia's to go we will not do visarjan around that time and for years people had been doing it uh, you know simultaneously so she does go an extra mile which then gives the BJP a great ground to you know but and forget the, the politics elements. just conceptually if someone wants to go to rath yatra you can't stop yeah, them right yeah you can't stop them unless until there's reasonable uh, i mean it is true that their biker rallies and their yatras have caused violence like in kasganj they were pretty rowdy and wherever they've taken these yatras out there have been communal hmm. tensions but that is something you've got to make sure that it doesn't happen you can't like stop a yatra from going hmm so they but had, but uh, it is true that they are quite a law and order no no mamta banerji had you know presented our uh, intelligence report uh, you know apprehending violence and all but that was not enough to you know uh, curb the freedom of speech uh, yeah but having said that i'm now that i think about it uh, i can i can imagine the sanghi lot not exactly having the most noblest intentions when they go through no they're not <laughs> a certain I'm, area i'm very um, i mean they they want to provoke like that muslim uh, area that they went through that was in up right kasganj where they went and where they were oh, shooting no, then it, the kind of snow glaring that happens in, in delhi ek dhakka aur do jama masjid tod do and so that delhi mein this uh, in jama masjid area uh, i think it is happening five to six times in a year So so so, so uh, that, that video yeah stopped, but yes the where, Delhi that video where there was this song along some hindi film song ki tune pe are muslimano dekho tumhe kya <laughs> yaar it was on yeah. it was i remember They it was covered on that thing, dj yeah. thing during the anyway what is your view how how should how can one tackle something like so this so it's interesting in a bjp rule state like up the police don't want anybody to give namaz hmm. but the same party wants to carry out a religious rally in the in name of an state. election campaign in another state Good so point. that's a duplicity which is very intrinsic to the bjp on many occasions hmm. but the point is that you know all things had and done it's not just the mamta government which has banned it it went to the calcutta high court the calcutta high court first allowed it 
a single bench then a double bench rethought it and then decided to ban it so yes. even the judiciary has weighed in and they are also not very happy because there is a legitimate fear is there or is the judiciary just like no, kind of I under pressure think, of the government i don't think whatever. the judiciary you mean it's the high court high i mean court how much can you really can put the government can, no, yeah. if that high is the case then, then, the then the supreme court also high by court the time all the time it does happen but i have seen how high court can be manipulated that may be so but i think but so it can but i think by and large is that a double bench has ru- given a ruling no no but uh, this is this is the basic law fundamental law from one judge ju- uh, judgment when it goes to the two judges bench they always stay, give a stay fast so, so they have given a stay so that is not uh, the grounds is basically an intelligence report that says uh-huh. there will be communal violence which is kind of but not uh, i mean if i if i were to be pragmatic about it do i really need a, an intelligence report to tell me that tell if me there is going to be a rally that they will not be but provoking. is it a religious rally or it's is a it a political rally it's not exactly it's a ram rath yatra ram rath yatra i don't know is it a ram rath yatra called ram it's a yatra of the, the bjp she has called it rath rath yatra i mean, I mean the whatever. only yatra uh, political figure in the indian firmament called ram right now is the president who's supposed to be a political <laughs> i don't know of any other ram in whose name a yatra is likely to be taken there is of course lord ram and if you don't think he's religious then yeah. i don't know what religion is सुन लिया अफ्रीका मुफत खोरों नॉट टू ब्रैग और एनी थिंग बट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री हफ्ता फीचर्स इन द टॉप फिफ्टी इन द वर्ल्ड ऑन साउंड क्लाउड इन द न्यूज एंड पॉलिटिक्स कैटेगरी फॉर पॉडकास्ट सो डू सब्सक्राइब एंड सी वॉट यूर मिसिंग बिकॉज वेन द पब्लिक पे इज द पब्लिक इज सर्व वेन एडवर्टाइज पे एडवर्टाइज आर सर्व सब्सक्राइब हेल्प कीप न्यूज इंडिपेंडेंट एंड फ्री ऑल न्यूज लॉन्ड्री पॉडकास्ट आर अवेलेबल ऑन आई ट्यून्स एंड स्टिचर एंड एनी अदर पॉडकास्ट प्लेटफॉर्म